A common thing that people get wrong on these refrigerants is they think that they're propane based. I get a lot of people say, well, that new propane refrigerant, and I'm always hesitant on kind of correcting them. But let me tell you, these are not propane based refrigerants. Hey, it's Keith with Yarbrough and Sons. About a year ago, we did a video on the changes that were coming with the new refrigerant. And we want to kind of just rehash that and make sure everybody's up to date on what the changes are. So to start, first we got two new refrigerants that we've been using on most residential units. So one is R32 and the other is 454B. Now, both of these refrigerants are great refrigerants. The only thing that they had to change on a lot of the rules are these are considered A2L refrigerants, which means they are slightly flammable. Uh, with that, manufacturers have made some changes to their equipment to make sure that everything is safe. Obviously, with these refrigerants, they've been tested out many, many times. In fact, R32 has been used in Europe for decades. So there's not too much we don't know about these. Safety-wise, they've, they've not had a problem over there. So shouldn't have any kind of problem. One reason we're changing these refrigerants is because of the global warming potential. Abbreviate that with a GDP. So whenever I talk about things, we'll talk about GDP. So R32 has been used for a long time overseas because the GDP is pretty good, pretty low. Um, but one reason they went with 454B, a lot of manufacturers is global warming potential is actually lower than even R32. So just in case there's ever any kind of changes because they make new regulations for the environment, 454B will take us a little bit further than what R32 would. Eventually the, the whole goal is to get down to as little GDP as possible. So there are some things coming down the pipe that they're doing, but obviously those are all in the test phase. So we're not at that phase yet, but major concerns is, you know, what are we gonna do with this old paint jug? 410A, you know, what if I have a unit with this? You will be good for a while. One good thing that the government did when they did their regulations is they actually made 410A not actually a phase out, they call it a phase down. So by the time they are through with that phase down, they'll still be able to produce 15% of, I think it's uh, 2022 levels. So that's good because we'll still have 410A being produced. Uh, there's not as many 410A units as there was R22, so that's a good thing too. So you'll probably see some fluctuations in prices with 410A, but I don't think it'll be as dramatic as you saw with R22 when they just cut it loose and then everybody bought out all the stock. We'll still have a recycled refrigerant of 410A, so that'll help out too with that, that cost. But there will be costs down the road of increasing that but we will not see as bad as our R22. So uh, definitely if you got an R22 unit, this would be the time to get into a new refrigerant. Uh, these refrigerants are pretty great. Their pressures are about the same as 410A. Similar, they're not exactly the same. Obviously we have to have new gauges, new tools. That's one of the negative things on our part is there are tools that are listed for this just so that we keep every safety we can because being an A2L refrigerant, you wanna make sure you're taking every precaution. One reason you really want to think about having a professional work on your unit, that, that's probably the ne negative thing on it because there are going to be certain devices that will sense your refrigerant and if it has a leak, it will shut down the outdoor unit and will actually run the fan so that we're dissipating that refrigerant. A common thing that people get wrong on these refrigerants is they think that they're propane based, whereas Propane-based refrigerants will come around. Many of us already have them in our house. If you have a brand new refrigerator, there's a good chance that it's using propane. I know most of the commercial refrigerators now are all propane, but these are not. This one is actually just a mixture of R32 and a uh, 1234YX, I think it is. Uh, so it's just a mixed refrigerant, kind of like 410A was just a mixed refrigerant of R32 and another type of refrigerant. But R32 is a, its own chemistry. It's its own refrigerant. There's no mixed in it or anything. There's no propane, anything like that. So I get a lot of people say, well, that new propane refrigerant, and I'm always hesitant on kind of correcting them. But let me tell you, these are not propane-based refrigerants. The industry has always thought about the safety of our customers, and that's what we want to make sure is that you're safe. But if you like the video so far, I definitely would think about subscribing to our uh, channel. That way we can send you more content and keep you aware of 
other things changing in the industry. Also, if you've liked this video, definitely hit the like button because that really helps us out. To be honest, this refrigerant, you can see videos all day long where they're holding the flame directly to it and you can see that it does kind of catch on fire, but once they remove the flame, it's gone. And that's part of the sensors we have is for those situations where it would be in such a tight area that you would have a problem. They've pretty much eradicated any kind of safety issues there. Obviously, manufacturers want to make sure you're safe. We want to make you sure you're safe. My biggest negative thing about these, if you see, there is no difference in the color. Unlike back in the day when we used to have green for R22 and pink for, for 410A, no more pink jugs for you. We got to pay attention to what, what refrigerant we're carrying. We have tons of jugs of refrigerant in our truck now. I wish they would distinguish the colors on these, but maybe that'll come down the line. So what does all this mean for homeowners? Well, you're not looking at too many changes for you. Things that would be something that you would actually want to look out on is who's servicing your unit. Uh, you want to make sure they're trained in these refrigerants and they know what they're doing and they know the regulations for these. Being that, that's going to cost probably a little bit more. So just to make sure you have the right kind of guy coming out there, uh, always vet any of your heat and air companies. Uh, besides that, efficiency wise, all the efficiency is the exact same as it is. All that is actually done through third party testing. So any kind of efficiency on a unit is going to be what the efficiency is. There's, we, we're still hitting those marks of minimum efficiency. All that's regulated by the government. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. Really for you as a homeowner, besides just looking for a great heat and air company to take care of your units, there's not really anything else that you need to do with these refrigerants. Here at Yarbrough and Sons, we want to make sure you're also aware of what's going on. So if you have any questions, definitely let us know. We'd be happy to, if we don't know the answer, be happy to find out what you need to know about these refrigerants.